Before we get into the technical details of ASHRAE Standard 62 in the upcoming lessons, it'll be helpful to first understand the history of this standard, as well as its use in common residential construction applications. ASHRAE Standard 62 was originally released in 1973. In 1989, a version was released that included a recommendation of air exchange rates of at least 0.35 air changes per hour, or 15 CFM per occupant. This recommendation was adopted by building codes and retrofit programs, and it's still in use today in some applications. Changes are handled by a volunteer committee using an open, consensus-based process, and a revision to the standard is released every three years. However, ASHRAE broke that cycle in 2003, making an important change. In that year, they split Standard 62 into Standard 62.2 for low-rise residential buildings and 62.1 for all other buildings. Then they returned to the three-year release cycle. In 2007, they released a version that shifted away from the philosophy of 0.35 air changes or 15 CFM per person to a calculation method that combines the number of occupants and the floor area into a single equation to determine the required ventilation rate. The version we'll use for the examples in this course was released in 2013. It's very similar to the current version, which was released in 2016. This is what the cover of the standard looks like. You can purchase any of the six versions released from 2003 to 2016 from ASHRAE at their website, techstreet.com. As of early 2017, the prices ranged from $37 to $93, depending on the year and the document format, printed or downloaded or both. This is a relatively short document. The text is full of technical terms and it's not particularly easy reading, but it's concise. In the 2013 version, the actual technical guidance is about eight pages. Of course, the cover, table of contents, terms and definitions, and climate data in the appendices make it a lot longer, but the core of the document is short enough to read in one sitting. Here are some quotes directly from the 2013 version of Standard 62.2. The purpose states that this standard defines the role of and minimum requirements for mechanical and natural ventilation systems and the building envelope intended to provide acceptable indoor air quality, IAQ, in low-rise residential buildings. The scope states that this standard applies to spaces intended for human occupancy within single-family houses and multifamily structures of three stories or fewer above grade, including manufactured and modular houses. This standard does not apply to transient housing such as hotels, motels, nursing homes, dormitories, or jails. ASHRAE Standard 62.2 was written primarily to apply to new construction. It assumes that all the specifications can be implemented with relative ease by the builder during construction. But in existing buildings, it may not be so easy, for example, to add a range hood to the kitchen. There may be structural or budgetary hurdles that make it difficult. So an appendix is also included that provides guidance on applying the standard to existing buildings. As seems to be typical for the residential building industry, we can't seem to all agree on a common standard. So different programs have adopted different versions of ASHRAE 62. The BPI Building Analyst Standard still references the 1989 version. The newer BPI 1200 Standard references the 2013 version. The standard work specifications created by the U.S. Department of Energy and NREL to guide the weatherization assistance program require the use of the latest version within one year of release. So, for example, agencies must transition to the 2016 version by the end of 2017. Energy Star for new homes gives participating builders the option to choose between the 2010 and 2013 versions of ASHRAE 62.2. Lead for Homes requires compliance with the 2010 version. And some people don't like ASHRAE 62.2 at all. There's a significant contingent of the building science community that thinks the required ventilation rates in the latest versions of this standard are too high. And they don't like that it doesn't take into account the advantages and drawbacks of different ventilation system designs. One result of this is the release of a competing document by Building Science Corporation. It's called a guide rather than a standard, and no big national program has adopted it as of early 2017, but it certainly raises some interesting questions. And the building codes have not adopted the newer ASHRAE calculations, which is another indication of disagreement with this approach. It's a fascinating debate going on, and if you want to learn more, get on the internet and start searching. Here's a table that summarizes this information. If you work under a variety of programs, you need to understand a lot of different versions. Hopefully by the end of this course, the differences will be clearer.